or associations that come across, like they've got everything organised, but really it's just all falling down the heap. Um, mate, I think we're gonna we're gonna just cut it there. Uh, looks like Facebook's cut us off for some reason. Well, I might have to restart it. Um, looks like uh, looks like we might be back. We might be back. Hopefully, um, for whatever reason, looks like we just had an interruption with Facebook, but we are back on on deck, folks. Um, all good. Um, well, we're going to take a very, very quick break and we're going to get straight into the news desk because there's a lot, lot happening. Well, um, we're going to be going to the young Nicholas first, mate, aren't we? We are indeed. We've got our yeah. very, very first guest, so we'll be going straight into that. Um, but two of our um, thank you to our two business sponsors for tonight Slavicek Studio Archit Architecture and Your Business Insurance. Here's some messages from Studio Slavicek Architecture. Welcome back to the uh, Oz Crow Soccer Show. It's episode 19, believe it or not. We're fast approaching that half a half a season mark, if you like, that 26-week yep. uh, milestone, or half a year mark. It's been incredible. Yossip, we've had some fantastic, fantastic um, guests throughout the course of this program. And the, the, the guests I love chatting to are the young players that are either making have made it overseas or making it overseas, uh, or yeah. even here... And they always provide a little bit of inspiration. Our next guest tonight is um, falls into that category, doesn't he? Yeah, yes. Uh, young Nicholas Bilokopic, uh, former Sydney United player. And uh, look, Bilokopic is uh, a name that's renowned in the Sydney United circles. As we can remember, his uncle Paul running around the park on, uh, in the 90s and early 2000s. Um, so uh, it's it's befitting that the family name continues and it looks like young Nicholas is uh, venturing on to make things uh, bigger and better for himself. And uh, we welcome you onto the show. Welcome, Nicholas. Hey, how's it going? Good, Good mate. mate. Good. Uh, first of all, Nicholas, welcome to the show. And what's it like over in Uzbekistan where you are right now? To be honest, very warm. <laughs> uh, it's a big difference from England, but we're getting used to it now. That's all right. You, um, you, you're not tempted to go out in your speedos for anywhere for a swim. No, nah, there's no nowhere to swim. There's no, nowhere to swim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all right, mate. Just joking with you. Uh, look, speaking of Uzbekistan, and uh, we might just jump in a little bit quickly about the Oli Roos and the preparations there. How how are things coming together for tomorrow night's big clash with Kuwait? To be honest, things look very good. Um, preparation camp has been good. All the boys have got along. Everyone's on the same wavelength now. I think the coaches um, have spread the message that this tournament's going to be a big tournament for us. We're looking to win it, of course. And yeah. I think the game, we're very positive and we're ready to go. Okay. Have you got right. any kind of insights about uh, team selection yet, by any chance? Uh, no insights at the moment. Match day minus one today. We've got a session in about what, two hours now. So Yeah. Okay. Now, you... mate. Tell us a bit about your your upbringing. Um, you've been, you know, it's a famous uh, surname, obviously, uh, um, at Sydney Croatia circles. But your dad's been heavily involved, and still is, obviously, as we mentioned, um, in the coaching side of things. But uh, tell us your 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 early beginnings. How did you take up the sport? And uh, you know, in those early years, who most um, inspired you at Sydney Croatia or Sydney, or Sydney United? Well, I think, to be honest, ever since I was young. I've been the early, well, I was an early boy in my family, um, if we're talking about siblings. So I was always that type of child that was put a ball in front of them and I always wanted to just play football 
I think I started United, Sydney United, maybe they were called Sydney Juniors back then, like under sixes at Lambie Reserve, just down the road from King Tom. Yeah, behind the yeah. scoreboard. Well, behind the grandstand, yeah. Yeah, and then ever since then, I just fell in love with the club. I think, obviously, my uncle played for them, my dad played for them, my city supports them. My dad is a big fan of them as well, so it just runs in the family, and I just thought yeah. I always wanted to be in Ireland, Sydney, Croatia, back in the day, Croatia, Sydney. So, yeah. So as you as you uh, grew through the age groups there, Sydney United, did did it sort of dawn on you? Uh, and, and when did it dawn on you? You thought I really want to make more of this. Well, I think it was coming to a stage where uh, I was a field player at around under fourteens, and Doc Carlos' son at the time, Oli Carlos, he left the club, and he was our goalkeeper at the time. And the coach said, um, "Bill, did you want to go in goals?" I'm like, "Yeah." Why not? I'll go in goal. So I think ever since that ever since that moment and since I hit a growth spurt, I thought, you know what? I could make a career out of this. I had keep coach Vitek Mala who faith in me, confidence in me. And I actually put that onto myself. Um, yeah. confidence in myself the bit further. And I just started taking everything seriously around like ages sixteen, seventeen. I moved schools, I went to build sports and that's when things just escalated and went forward. Excellent. And did that involve any kind of represent representative selections, you know, New South Wales reps and all that sort of stuff? Um, to be honest, I never really got chosen for the New South Wales teams, all those representative teams, until, like like I said, when I moved schools to uh, Westfields, yeah. before, once before then I was getting noticed here and there, playing for NPL under-20s and things like this. But then um, that just spiralled and took off. I was... Then I started getting selected. The scouts started seeing me more. I think we went to the World Cup. Uh, but before then, we went to like a camp in England with the Australian team. And that was my first real taste of international football. So once I got that first little taste, I thought, yeah, this is what I want. Excellent. Now, we had uh, Gilles Kokalas on last week um, all the way from Croatia. Now we've got another international guest in from Uzbekistan. But... Um, obviously, the, there's something there at a Denzel Park that just seems to breed world-class goalkeepers. And um, we, we actually heard from Jelko, his own son, Oliver, Oliver is in Croatia at the moment. Um, we've, we've heard, you've mentioned the goalkeeping coach at, um, at Sydney, Croatia, and he's very, very well-renowned. I think he's been there for seven, eight years or something like that. Um, and there's other... A other great resume. Yeah, a great resume, and there's other yeah. great um, up-and-coming talents there as well. What makes Sydney United such a strong breeding ground of quality uh, goalkeepers? I think, to be honest, um, just back in the day when I was the Croatia Sydney days, all the kids that um, sort of fall in that generation of their didders, their tatas, and all their stresses, etc., playing for the club back in the days, I think that just the culture around the club, it's a very family. At a club and everyone that's Croatian in the area or in Sydney, to be fair, they want to play for that club. They want to play for what the club was back in the day and they want to try and rebuild and get it back to the stage that it was at. And I think um, for the young players now and sort of my generation, our fathers fall in, the state, in that sort of generation where it was like the, the golden era of Australia. I think that's what pushes them more to be like them type of players. So it uses, you, you, can, you can use that um, knowledge and visuals that you saw as a young man growing up as an inspiration to, to push you along, right? Yeah, no, of course, yeah. of course. Good stuff. Now, um, well, let's talk about the, the adventure to head overseas, mate. At what age did you actually step over? I moved over just before COVID when I was yeah. 17. I've been in okay. now for maybe just over two and a Two and a bit years. So two and okay. a was two it years. directly to Huddersfield, or was there a little bit of a trial period elsewhere as well? Yeah, yeah. So, sort of. Sort of uh, when I went to when I went camp in camp with the Australian team, um, we first England in the first match. I wasn't really expecting to play, but the opportunity. I ended up having a good game, and the goalkeeper coach play for England. And after that, I'm not sure if it was directly after the game they started having contact with the coaches, etc. But it, later on, a couple of weeks down the line, I got like a uh, my students called me up and said, "Oh, there's people from England that are interested in you." And ever since then, 
after the World Cup, we had a World that was World Cup preparation, and after that, I went straight to England, and there was there was sort of like a week trial uh, process, but it wasn't really a trial. It was just me getting the environment, feeling the environment, the culture around the club, and then after I just signed. Beautiful. Was that for a uh, for a professional contract at that point in time, or for an academy spot to work towards a contract? Um, at the time, it was for a scholarship contract, yes. And then I think it was been there now, what, just like I said, two and a bit years, and I signed three contracts. Yeah. So I think it's going quite well at the moment. You must be doing something right. <laughs> <I hope so. laughs> yeah. Now, when you first moved abroad, uh, Nicholas, um, how 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 did you first of all find it? Like, was it a culture shock? Was the intensity a lot, lot different? Did you the, the teammates were they friendly? Were they very kind of uh, coy towards you? How did you find those first few, let's call them weeks, when you first moved abroad? I'll start off with off the pitch. I think off the pitch. Um, Things were a bit tough when I first moved there, obviously. I was only 17 at the time and I had to live with a different family called Diggs. We had to live in Diggs with a completely yeah. different family. Didn't have a car at the time, so I was catching the bus to training every morning, there and back. So it was quite tough. And once winter came, it was uh, very hard training the snow. First time seeing snow, going out there and training, your fingers are frozen, toes are frozen. It was <laughs> yeah. very fun, but... Once I got in the rhythm of things, that side, that side of things started to get a bit easier. But then when I moved to like the pitch side of things and in the training ground, I think when I first moved there, luckily enough, there was another keeper from Sydney United that was there already. He'd been there a year, and that sort of helped me get into the team just yeah. into like the, that quite easily. And everyone welcomed me in fine. The club, it's a great club, honestly. I can't say anything negative about the club because they just welcomed yeah. me in. They brought me in with open arms and can't complain. Excellent. And go I was ahead. Going to say, and and Hartlepool, uh, the um, the actual town. What's it like compared to Sydney? Obviously, obviously a lot lot smaller than Sydney. <laughs> but is it was it was that hard to adjust? Like just living in a in a town. Like how 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 big is Hartlepool? How, how population wise? Hartlepool. I'm not sure what the population like is there, but I didn't actually live inside of Hartlepool. I lived in maybe like half an hour away in a place called Durham, which is very beautiful, but um, Harley Pool's right. So when the clouds are out, it's very depressing. But <laughs> compared to Sydney, I don't think compared to Sydney. So, yeah. so just just on Harley Pool. So at at Huddersfield this year, they've they gave you an opportunity for a loan out to Harley Pool. Did that come about because Harley Pool were looking for a solution, or the Huddersfield wanted to get miles into you? Had it, or was it a bit of both, maybe? Um, I think, to be honest, it was a bit of both. But at the time, before Hartlepool came into the question, into the picture, sorry, um, there was a game, FA Cup game against Burnley. And I was on the bench, funnily enough. And the keeper went down in the first half. So I got my opportunity, came on, made my debut. And uh, in a good game, we won. And that's when all the loans started coming in. I think the gaffer, he thought to himself that he did on loan now. I thought to myself as well, it's time to get game time against men, time to experience that sort of different environment in playing football. So um, when Hartlepool came knocking, there's a few clubs, but Hartlepool came knocking and I thought, well, myself and the keeper coach, we thought this is probably the best opportunity for me to play games and um, to me to build experience. Sure he knew, he knew the gaffer as well and some of the players. So he just thought it was probably the right move for me. And that move into Hartlepool, when you come into a, a senior team environment, yeah. compared to what you were doing at Huddersfield, is there a contrast yeah. to that? Like when you're sitting there as a second choice, and and not any time you're not a first choice keeper, right? Could be, you know, you, you're you're on there on standby, but when you come over to Hartlepool, you're expected to stand up and deliver. Yeah. Just explain a little bit about the differences possibly there. Um, the difference coming into a team like that, I was told to get, like to go in there and just be ready. Just be ready to play. Um, your chance might not come straight away, and it didn't for me. When I first got there, I think the team went eight games on so the keeper, just stepped up a different level. So it took a while for me to get my chance to play. But um, being at Huddersfield, I think the environment at the time, the culture around the team and team dressing room, it was excellent. Like everyone was very happy. 
I think it was a stage where we went to 17 unbeaten and I left around six game marker in that sort of period. But then when I went to Hartlepool, it was kind of the same because when I got there, everyone was just happy as well. And when I, I, I moved into there and there's a lot of other young players on loan, so that sort of helped me build myself into the team as well. And yeah. Now, after the um, Young Socceroos commitment now in Uzbekistan, what's after that? Are you coming home to Australia for a short break, for a holiday? Are you going to Croatia or are you going somewhere else or are you going straight back to England uh, for the pre-season? I dare say there won't be much of an off-season. Is that right? Yeah, there's not much of an off-season here overseas. <laughs> but um, no, funnily enough, I was in Croatia two weeks ago just before the tournament for 10 days just I got time off. They told me I can go enjoy my break Huddersfield. They didn't have to come back for the playoffs. So I went to go enjoy my time off in Croatia, see family, friends. But the, my off-season depends on how we go in this tournament. Like um, It can either range between, I think, the 7th or the 19th. So from the end of the group stage to the final date, depends on how we end up going. Hopefully, mm-hmm. we go to the But if we go to the final, we have to be back in the 20th, back at Huddersfield. So not that much of a off-season for me. Of rest. Yeah. Hey, Twinchy, I've got an update for Nicholas. Your dad's team's nil-nil at halftime against Bonnie Rig, mate. So, uh, there you st- go. They're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, just, just speaking about those commitments there, Nicholas, um, you know, look, you, your year is full on. You've got 46 rounds to, to accommodate in the uh, – is, it is 46 in League 2, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, 46. Yeah, 46 rounds to accommodate. How about your your life outside of football? What are you doing to occupy yourself in terms? Of, are you studying? Are you are you have you got a social network you can keep yourself busy with? Um, to be honest, after we train, I just want to go home and just forget about football. I go home. And I, I'm at training ground about five hours a day. You just want to go home and relax. I probably just put on some Netflix. Um, I like to just look at things online. I was supposed yeah. to be. I chose the option to just wait until my career is done and then I'll mm-hmm. start yeah. things like that. But yeah. Yeah. And but do you have it. much opportunity with, with teammates or with social friend, social networks that you've made, um, you know, to just to adventure out and see what the UK is about? Yeah, no, of course. I just, I've got my car. So me and mates, we just, yeah. we want to go do something. Just hop on and we'll just go travel to, I don't know, Manchester's. 45 minutes away, Leeds is 30 minutes away, going to the oh, city wow. centre, yeah. things like that. Everything's quite close, so you can travel in England in not that long, to be honest. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. It is, yeah. It's not that much. And the, and the highways are pretty good too. Yeah, very good. And very efficient. most importantly, they drive on, on the left side of the road like we do, hey? There's not much thinking. <laughs> <laughs> not like when you go to Croatia and you have to think five steps ahead just, yeah. Um, no, yeah. that's great. Uh, Nicholas, um, any any last mess- um, questions, Josip, for, for our guest tonight? Oh, look, from from this tournament yourself, what what would you, if you had to sort of just to vocalise your expectations of yourself, you know, what, what would be a pass mark for you? Um, for me, I just think hopefully the team wins. I just want the team to win. If we can get a win, it just looks good in all of us. It looks good for the next generation of Australian players coming through. I think yeah. the case is just want, yeah, and then a good note here. Good stuff, mate. Awesome, mate. Well, on that note, we wish you all the very best. Nicholas, thank you for joining us. Um, at times, I think there was a little bit of a, 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 a jumpy connection, but I think we, we were able to get everything that we were able to hear from you. So we wish you all the very best. Enjoy the Uzbeki heat. And then uh, um, when, when you get back to uh, England, it'll probably be a heat wave and 23 or 24 degrees or something like that. So, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a very, very hot summer <laughs> over in the UK. <laughs> I don't uh, know. Does it get that high end up up in Durham, mate? Does it get past twenty two degrees? Uh, it never did, but the sun was always out, so I couldn't complain. Better than the there you okay. go. Yeah, all absolutely. Right. No complaints there. Good. No, no that's right. All Nicholas, right. All the very all best. The... We look forward to hopefully seeing you uh, make an appearance for the Oli Roos, and if not, we'll keep a nice uh, eye across your uh, development as you take on the UK calendar year next year. Yes, thanks for having me, guys. Good on you, uh, Nicholas. Nicholas Bilokapic. Uh, you're listening to the Ozcrow Soccer Show.
Are you one of those people that just pays their business insurance each year? Insurance is the last thing we want to worry about when running our business day to day, unless there is a claim that needs to be made, right? And once we have our insurance in place, we just keep renewing it. We just find it too hard to shop around. Does that sound like you? Well, at your business insurance, we could save you money and get you a better deal. We'll review your current insurance and determine if you're getting the most favourable offers from the insurance market. Call your business insurance on 1300 767 456. Welcome back to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. It's time to straight away get into the news. Without any further ado, we've got so much to get through, folks. Josipe, over to you, the Ozcrow Roundup. Yes, mate. Look, we'll jump straight into the Victorian Roundup. Uh, Gorsbich Bears, uh, as you can imagine, taunts you with the sad news of uh, Maxi's passing. There was no match for the uh, Div 2 Metro. Uh, they didn't manage to get on the park this week. They, will f- they are scheduled to face Hume United this weekend, uh, but we'll wait to hear from Ivica. Uh, a little bit later on. The Masters team did on Friday night have a 4-3 win over Point Cook and they've taken up third spot now. Over to Strathmore. Uh, the Strathmore, um, what's it called, uh, Div 2 Metro. Well, we'll go straight into the State League then. Uh, the State League, they've got the big scalp. They've got their big win, a 1-0 win over Keelor Park. Uh, we're hopeful the split shunny can continue the form and lift off the bottom of the ladder this week as they face ninth spot Whittlesea United, who have really dropped off the pace now. The women's team had a 3-2 win over Epping and a special call out to my cousin's daughter who scored her first goal for Strathmore women. So well done, Andrea. Holding on to sixth spot this week. They're away to Faulkner. Uh, the sexy football kings, the masters at Strathmore. <laughs> <laughs> they face Manningham Yulve this week, and that's first v second. Uh, the split come off a big another win from last week. They beat Slogger three two, and their Div two men's had a four three loss. The ninth place uh, Div two team lost to Newmarket, and they face Newport this week. NK Bunkhead in the uh, Vic Soccer Leagues had a one nil win over Melbourne Uni Angels, uh, but their website's gone. Belly up, so uh, Vukovar, uh, I don't have a score for them unless someone can post it up on the internet for us. Um, we'll jump along to North Geelong Day, mate. Uh, North Geelong Taunch. Uh, look, the reunion round was uh, was it had a special uh, treat because they, it was 1v2 and North Geelong came away with the win, mate, and they uh, now extend their lead on top of the ladder. Young George Ellis, Yuda Ellis, another set-piece conversion. Uh, were you at the game, Taunch? I was, mate. Um, it was a very, it was a tight game. It was a bruising encounter at times. It was great to see. Um, look, I got there a bit late, so I wasn't able to uh, pop in for the pre-match um, function. It was a small function, and there was a few people there. And uh, the legend um, um, Miro Janic was uh, holding a bit of a, a, a speech and, and what you know just before. But uh, there was a lot of um, you know old familiar faces there as well, and, and it was a real festive time. Um, in many ways, although there was a minute silence held prior to the game in memory of of, of one of the club's uh, volunteers, Frank Shimovich, who passed away recently. And, geez, that's a that's a worrying trend, isn't it, Josip? I mean, yeah. Almost every week we've got one of those things. But, look, in, in memory of um, um, Frank, I suppose, the boys rallied um, and they came out with a 1-0 win against eventually a nine-man Moreland City. They had two players send off. Most importantly, though, North Geelong have now opened up a four-point gap over the second-place Moreland City and a six-point gap over third-place Moreland Zebras. So with the top two teams promoted to NPL next year, um, the Warriors are looking really, really good. I did catch up with, uh, in my opinion, the man of the match, um, Lachlan McGrath, after the game. And he said, look, we've been talking about promotion since since day dot, since the season started. It's always been on our radar, but we're taking each week as it comes week by week. Next week, they've got Northcote City at home, the only team that has beaten the Warriors. So the way they're looking at the moment, uh, North Geelong are certainly headed to the NPL Victoria competition next yeah, year. Great to see. Sure, mate. Maybe one day uh, NPL TV can put them on live stream and I can watch them oh. up here, mate. 
<laughs> Absolutely. And, I, and maybe just, I can do just some Just for my own selfish well. purposes, that's all. And you can do the commentary. <laughs> now, I did see your son, Carl, who was uh, um, the reserve goalkeeper. And I said, Carl, are you going to be uh, taking video footage for your father's sake? And he goes, oh, we're banned from having mobile phones on the bench. So, uh, unfortunately, yeah. Yossi, you weren't able to even get um, any of that happening. <laughs> that's right. I, I had Rose in the stands giving me the blow-by-blow. Blow. <laughs> Good stuff. Shout out to Carl. He's a, a lovely boy. He's Good on him. Dobro si ga odgojio. Ah, uh, and onto good and onto good things too. Our women's team they have come back to winning ways and uh, beat Elwood eight four. So that's a couple on the trot for them now, sitting in sixth place. They've got a big task this week though. They've got third place Spring Hills, who are always a formidable opponent. Uh, the Elko Park Cardinals, the uh, local league offshoot, uh, they had a five nil win in Div One over Breakwater and a two one win over Drysdale in Div Two. Over to Dandy City, mate. Yeah, uh, I didn't have any schools posted uh, for the women, but they they are off to Glen Ira this week to try and solidify their fifth spot on the ladder. Their men's team, Dandy City men's team, they had the uh, Crow Derby with Dynamo last week, uh, going down two one. Uh, unfortunately, at home, um, there's a bit of video footage there. That Tunch has put up for us. Thank you, Tunch. Yeah. Uh, look, second last Dandy is starting to really slip away from the pack now and need results fast if they want to stay in the NPL. Yeah. Um, like I said, going down two one. St Albans were the better team throughout the match. Uh, not to say that Dandy didn't have their moments and they probably could have converted the, um, some of their chances, but Xander Guy, he's in form. Uh, he seems to pop up just when they need him. He's uh, yeah. Starting to make a habit of it, which is a good thing for Crooney, I, I reckon. But they face um, another relegation battler this week, Dandy. Uh, they face uh, Hume City this week. So uh, good luck to Dandy. Hopefully they can turn it around. Uh, St Albans men, as we see, that the 2-1 win over there, Dandy, that pushes them to ninth spot on 20 points. They'll face off with Hume at home this week. And uh, they beat uh, – with Avondale, sorry. They beat Avondale the first time around away. So uh, we look forward to them doing the same thing to them this week. Because I love now, if you want, if, yeah, if you want to catch an interview with um, um, Kruni Raj of the um, St Albans um, uh, uh, coach, uh, tune in to or go to the Football Out West show, our sister uh, po- um, uh, podcast. Go to the Football Out West show Facebook page or the Football Out West show YouTube channel, and you can catch a um, a very special tribute also to Maxi Sentich, but also uh, uh, an exclusive interview with Kruni Raj of a very good interview, by the way. Um, at, but on the flip side, there's the bottom half of the um, NPL ladder, Josipe. Ninth, St. Albans uh, Dynamo. Tenth, Melbourne Knights. And 13th, Dandenong City. That's not what we want to see. We don't want no, to no. see the Croatian club uh, community clubs at the wrong end of the table. We want to see them in the top six, not in the bottom six. So um, um, come on, if you're listening to us, anyone from the Saints, Knights, or from Hayduk, Pull the pull the finger out, pull the socks up, do what you got to do so that we have a barnstorming finish towards That's the end right. of the season. We want to see Josipe four Croatian four. community we clubs in next year's um, NBL. How good would that be? Four out of the fourteen clubs be being Croatian. You know what. You, you've got to dare to dream, right? And, and I know Strathmore's not doing it uh, easy at the minute, but, geez, how good would it be if in a few years' time to see five in the top rung, mate? Oh, yeah, mate. Real. Every second week, we've got a derby. It would be good. It would be good. But uh, on to the Knights, Melbourne Knights. Oh, did we yeah. cover St. Albans? Yep, on to the Melbourne yeah. Knights. Yeah, on to Melbourne Knights. Uh, so Melbourne Knights, they had a one-all draw with Avondale at home. Like, in a very entertaining game, I've got to say, mate. That was, uh, I liked with, uh, watching that match. It was a bit of an arm wrestle at times. Uh, there was a cracking goal by Luka Cerlic, uh that equalised the forum. Uh, as you saw, they sit 10th uh, on the ladder, 19 points, and they headed their Friday night, the OG derby, they call it, the original derby yeah. against South Melbourne. Nothing on like night. it. If this doesn't get you out of your lounge chairs, nothing will. Get out there and support them. Get out to Summer Street, have a veteran, and then get in the stands and cheer loud and proud. Uh, and then the, the following team... Tuesday, uh, before we get there, the following oh. Tuesday, it's the Australia Cup, and that's at yeah. Knight Stadium. A tough one. Now, if they can win this, they're into the final um, 32. Uh, five yep. clubs from Melbourne get uh, into the thirty uh, uh, round of 32. Now, I know Josipe, in the past, a lot of the clubs – they, they treat the Cup, the Australia Cup, the FFA Cup, call it what you like. They treat it with um, not as much priority as the league. But look, you know what? It's It puts the clubs on the national stage. And I'd really love to see, um, you know, Gold Coast Knights, 
uh, uh, what are they called? Willow be uh, Dallies well, from Sydney? So the old Sydney Dalmats, yeah, but the, so I Sydney think in the Dalmats, league yeah. Dallies, yeah. We'll talk about them a little bit later on. But also, obviously, um, Sydney United or Hurstville, Zagreb, one of those are going to progress. Western Knights are still in it. So we yeah. want to see as many Croatian clubs in the final round of 32 because last year we only had the Gold Coast Knights. Gold Coast Knights are still in it. They've got a game tomorrow, which we'll, we'll yeah. shortly get to. But before that, yeah. next Tuesday, Knights fans, there at Knights Stadium, 7.30 p.m. kickoff. Knights taking on uh, Oakley. And this Friday, all form books go out the window when these two sides meet. Uh, Croatia versus Hellas, the old derby, the original derby. Get along to Knights Stadium there also, 7.30 p.m. kickoff. Good stuff, yeah. And whilst we're still on the Knights, mate, the women had a great win, 4-2 over Geelong Galaxy. They remain in eighth spot and uh, now now look forward to hosting, uh, I think it's second spot, Melbourne Uni on Sunday. So big challenge for them. Quick update here, though, mate. Uh, thanks to Dario Medjugorac, Vukovar had a 5-2 win on Friday night. So uh, thanks to Dario. He might want to take over the Vic Soccer website, though. <laughs> 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 we'll talk about that. In, we'll talk about something similar in our new segment. Oh, it's bit coming. Svizhnayu Nemayu Poima is the, new, the name That's of the right. new segment. Hold on to that very, very tightly. Uh, mate, let's go to Glen Orkey. Tassie. Uh, nice. Tassie, yeah. So, uh, look, not, not a lot happened in Tassie this week because the uh, Glen Orkey men and women had a week off due to a cup round in Tassie and they've both been knocked out of the cup rounds. But let's have a little focus on their development squad there. It's like your 16s, 18s, 20s sort of situation. They had a big 5 0 win over Kingborough Lions on Sunday. And there they are, arm in arm at the match. So well done, lads. Keep up your good form. Uh, I've seen some of their uh, footage through their Facebook site. It's, uh, they've got some good talent coming through there. So uh, yeah, keep, keep up the good work. Over to South Australia, mate. Adelaide Croatia had a solid 3 0 win over Adelaide Victory. Um, they had there was another game, Tonch, where a couple of send offs. So, um, this time for a 3 0 win, so holding on to fifth spot, which is a good res- which is a massive result, really, because that top six area is starting to really tighten up. And they're facing Adelaide Hellas now. Adelaide Hellas, if they beat them, they swap spots, they Adelaide Croatia go third, uh, and Adelaide Hellas pop out. So, um, yeah, good luck to the guys. The women's team had a 5 1 loss at the hands of Uni SA. And uh, need a bit of a confidence boost. They're playing bottom side Ingle Farm, so hopefully they can get that there. Uh, the Vukovi 4A, nil all draw against Dragon Warriors, and the 4B team had a two all draw. Mm-hmm. Uh, takes us over to Nullarbor, mate, to Western Australia. Western Knights this week. Uh, they're at home to Mandurah, coming off a clinical 3 0 win over Uni WA and returning to second spot. Uh, over at Guala Croatia, the match was abandoned due to COVID reasons. Well, yeah, Balcata, too many players in the team had COVID, so that's cooled off. They play Perth Glory MPL this week. But in our Swiss nail, a Nemo poema moment. Let's stop it there. Let's stop it there. We've got a great little intro for our new segment. Take it away. Uh, here in Croatia, everyone's Mourinho. On his Swiss nail, a Nemo point. <laughs> Nemo point. <laughs> and that Thanks, is the spider. name of our new segment. <laughs> Thanks to Jelko Spider Kalatsa last week. Svisnayu Anemayu Poima. Anyway, mate, what is this week's entry in this, the Svisnayu Anemayu Poima? It's been making my skin crawl. Guelo Croatia women. They've been playing a season for five or six games. And every time I go to their bloody <laughs> Football West website, look at that, where it says Guelo Croatia. No games played, no goals scored, no wins, no draws, no losses. But, Tonchi, we can contradict that by showing them the footage of the women's team singing the club song after a win. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, what, what's wrong with Football West? <laughs> Now, we must pause it here and say there are some swear words. <laughs> you will probably get your ears pierced, and I mean not pierced as in the earlobes, but the actual eardrums. So a word of warning, we do continue at your own. <laughs> at your own, at your uh, own risk. Yeah, at your, your own, own risk. risk.
<laughs> there's more, there's more. Right. Football now, West, if you can watch, Captain if you can get a hell, hold of our show. <laughs> <laughs> that is Lydia Denona. Uh, the, uh, Denona, the, the yeah. Captain there. She is a pocket rocket, and gosh, can they scream. And it's great to see. It's absolutely good to see. And I'm sure, viewers, you will, um, or prostit nam for uh, airing some, uh, well, well, let's say some choice words there. But it is after 8.30 p.m. local time, so um, um, M, M audience is uh, is allowed. Look, I'll say this, don't <laughs> you? Football's an emotive sport, and you have to release those emotions. You, otherwise, if you bottle them up, bad things can happen, right? So let's just make sure the girls can get that off and get their steam out. But... I think they deserve that because the way they've been treated by Football West and his bloody records yeah. department, then that's what they need to give them, a bit of a river. It's, you're spe- it's, it's insane. Like we see, um, I, I know the lads down at Football Out West, um, we do, we prepare a show on a Sunday evening and you know we're, we're hoping to get as many of the results in time, the ladders updated, what you're not. They say here in Victoria it's the, it's the role of the um, the referees. Well, Goodness me, it doesn't take that long to, to update it. It might take 10 minutes, but do it there at the ground before you've got to move on to the next ground, if that's the case, or do it later that night. And that should be part and parcel of it. Now, if they can't do it, ring it through to the to the score department or something like that, whatever the case may be. In this day and age, um, when we've got smartphones and what you're not, it should be very simple, if nothing else, just to automatic, automatically put a score in. And it, it happens across the board. It's not just Western Australia. It's not just Victoria. We've seen with the Vic Amateur um, uh, soccer results as well. It seems to be happening everywhere. So, folks, there's a lot of people that rely on that, not just for entertainment's sake, for actual professional reasons. Get your act together, folks. Otherwise, you're going to get get nominated once again for the Sviznayu Anemayu Poima segment. On that note, we're going to take, take a, a little from. bit of a break. <laughs> and when we, return, when we return, we're going to continue with the Oz Crow Roundup. Don't go away, folks. Welcome back to the Ozcrow Soccer Show, show part two of the Ozcrow Roundup. Let's go to the ACT, Yossi Pen. Okay, uh, O'Connor Knights, the men return to winning form, a gutsy 4-3 win over West Canberra Wanderers. Getting back in the top four. Uh, no match this week with the cup final on in uh, ACT, so with a bit of a rest and probably well, very well due for those guys. They've had um, That was the sixth game in three weeks for O'Connor Knights with catch-ups and cup games. So they've had the uh, the short straw drawn on them, mate. So uh, good luck to them in the returning to their winning form and build that up for the rest of the year too. The women's team, they beat Woden Valley 5-0. The third-place Knights take on Bell West this week. Over at Deakin, they Canberra, Croatia. The women's team can continue that steamrolling form of theirs going from strength to strength. They beat Canberra United's uh, MPL outfit uh, 7-2 and no match for them this week. And likewise for the men, they remain on top after a 2-1 win over Olympic and, uh, again, a bit of a rest for them with this cup round coming up. We'll uh, head up the Hume, mate. Just head up to New South Wales. Uh, we 
don't have any updates on websites or clubs pages for Warrington or Denzel. So uh, we'll jump over to South Coast United. Thanks, Ivo Spanicek. He sent me an image a little little earlier on there. We couldn't get his images up in time. But um, they did have a two-all draw, mate. They got a match underway, South Coast United. So uh, that's a two-all draw against Winona. And uh, they move up to third last now. So they've come away from the bottom and they're slowly starting to creep up. This week they face mid-table Port Kembla. Have I still got you there, Tonch? Yeah, you've got me there. I'm just looking. I, I thought we we did have a, um, a, a a graphic for that one, but we don't seem to have it, unfortunately. So we'll just have yeah, to move on. Yep. Newcastle, Croatia. The uh, Diff Three team had a bye last week, and uh, however, the all age men had a all age group had a three all draw with Gresford Vasey. Um, I'm not sure if you grabbed that image that I sent you, Tonch, about the uh, Gresford guys taking the net off the uh, Yeah, the down in the bottom right-hand corner. There you go. Ah, yeah, there it is. And uh, look, that's, that's just a nice nice note there. There's, there's an opposition team who's doing their thing, um, respecting the club that they've come and been hosted by, and they're taking the net down and helping the team out so they can pack up and all enjoy the uh, social festivities afterwards. So well done to Gresford and the... Um, and in saying that, the uh, Newcastle Croatia guys continue on. The Div 3 team's back in action on Saturday against Raymond Terrace. Now, uh, if anyone's ever been to Raymond Terrace in the middle of winter, it's a uh, fog-laden area as soon as uh, a bit of that chill comes in. So um, it would be interesting to see if they can get any footage this week. So, uh, <laughs> Zivko, if you're listening or watching, see if you can take a photo through the fog at Raymond Terrace. Uh, let's go head over to Hurstville Zagreb on Friday night this week the away to Uni in New South Wales they had a one-all draw with Camden Tigers they're sitting in second spot one point behind Hawkesbury uh, and two points ahead of Newcastle Jets uh, over in Sydney United uh, the former United continues to improve dramatically We're since Mira Vlastelica and former Melbourne Croatia flanker Joe Chaletta took over the reins we have to get Joe on the show soon, oh, we'll by the way, Tonch, however, uh, especially leading into that um, <laughs> cup round with Hurstville. But for now, let's pay attention to the team and the 1-0 win over Sutherland Sharks and a dramatic 90th minute winner by Antelmi. So, fantastic way to finish the uh, the game. And you go into the change rooms all full of steam and you've got that 1-0 win. Yeah, uh, no. So, they, they push up to eighth spot, which is good. That's a, It's an, another little rung up the ladder, just returning into their form. This week, they've got the, uh, a bit of a tricky customer, Mantua at Rangers, who do know how to be a prickly customer. Uh, over to Willoughby Dullies, uh, also known as Dalmatia Sydney. They have a cup round tomorrow against Northern Tigers, so good luck to Dalmatia. And just a little further up the Hume Highway, Tonch up in my territory now, mate. Gold, Gold Coast. Coast. Nice. Gold Coast, nice. We didn't have a round for the uh, seniors uh, last week, uh, but they get action back underway tomorrow night. They're up against Penn Power away at AJ Kelly Park. So uh, tune into that if you can, ladies and gentlemen. It'll be a good game. Pen, that's always a, a feisty clash against Penn Power. And then on Saturday night, away to Brisbane Olympic, who the top top of the table at NPL here in uh, Queensland. So it's first v fifth on Saturday night. Brisbane Knights, uh, the senior men went down 1-0 to North Brisbane, sitting in seventh place. They host uh, Slacks Creek on Sunday afternoon and the women's team sit on top of their Div 3 table. They face Capalaba this week after no match last week. That, Tunchi, is the nation's news for our Australian it Croatian is. clubs. A lot happening and over certainly over the next seven days, even a lot more happening, particularly in the area of the Australia Cup. So looking forward to that. Folks, we're going to take a very, very quick break. It's time for the overseas roundup, the Croatian roundup. And thereafter, we've got our guest for tonight, um, our second guest for tonight, Ivica Petrlic, who is the representative of HNK Gorspich Bears. And we've got a very, very special tribute to uh, the late Maxi Santic, uh, a young man who in his short life touched so, so many people. That's all, that's all to come. Plus the official trailer of the new FIFA documentary, Croatia um, a nation defined is that what it's called? A Croatia uh, defining a nation is the name of it. We will play that exclusively um, here on the Ozcrow Soccer Show a little bit later on. So still a lot to come. Don't go away. Are you one of those people that just pays their business insurance each year? Insurance is the last thing we want to worry about when running our business day to day unless there is a claim that needs to be made, right? 
And once we have our insurance in place, we just keep renewing it. We just find it too hard to shop around. Does that sound like you? Well, at Your Business Insurance, we could save you money and get you a better deal. We'll review your current insurance and determine if you're getting the most favourable offers from the insurance market. Call Your Business Insurance on 1300 767 456. Welcome back to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. Let's go straight into the overseas roundup. Now, Yossi, we've got to touch on, on, in my opinion, he's the greatest football at the moment. Forget Messi, forget Mbappe, forget Ronaldo, forget whoever you want. Even, uh, uh, Luka Modric, he's the king. Oh, yeah. um, look, it was, uh, it was. I know we're both Liverpool fans and, and it was a bit devastating for us to have <laughs> Liverpool lose and, um, and there's all sorts of controversies on and off the field with regards to that. But uh, see Modric um, draped with the Croatian flag. Um, the 10th time now, 10th time now, um, or 10 year, 10th year in a row that we've had um, Croatians um, in the um, figuring in the uh, um, elite club competition. Look at that. He's got the V for victory happening there. Um, he's becoming used to uh, holding that trophy aloft. Um, it's just absolutely fantastic, isn't it? I mean, um, there's the graphic there with the uh, top, the last 10 years, Luka Modric having uh, uh, been on two occasions, I suppose, there. Um, then you've had, you know, Dejan Lovren, Ivan Perisic, Mateo Kovacic. Um, uh, well, actually, yeah. what did I say? Modric has been there four times. Five times? What am five I talking times. about? Five <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, incredible. Um, Perisic, the news is he's just signed for Tottenham um, Hotspur yeah. in the um, in the EPL for a reported one hundred and eighty pounds a week. Watch, what's 180, that? 180,000 pounds. What's that? Three hundred and <laughs> hundred eighty pounds say... is probably what they signed you and me for. <laughs> yeah, down at the Alco Park for the Harvest, year. maybe. Yeah, maybe <laughs> uh, I stand corrected. That's why I've got you, Yossip. That's why I've got you. You're the voice of reason. Yeah. Um, but that's amazing. What's that? Three hundred and fifty thousand Australian dollars per week. Incredible. Hey, I told mate. my I, I told my son earlier that tonight. He goes, "This is what Perisic is going to get." He goes, "What? What? I'm going to become a soccer player." I couldn't say anything and yes or no to that. <laughs> After that, his mum just looked at him and said, "Teach us no to school, That's that. <laughs> oh, but, uh, what? That, that's an incredible uh, um, statistic, feet, isn't yeah. it? If you like feet, yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, look has proven time and time again. He's gone from the fans' opinion of being the worst Real Madrid signing in history to yeah. being the player that they can't dream to be without anymore. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That, that, that speaks for volumes on its own. It alone all the all the championships and all the cups and all the medals that he's taken out, including the second place in the World Cup. So, um, hey, look, uh, you can only be in awe of this guy, and and so many people um, will sing his praises, and including the two of us, he's the he's the ultimate professional, and he's the ultimate human being because he, he he's humble when. And never shows any signs of arrogance or demanding extraordinarily high rates. When you look at people like Mbappe, who's basically held the gun to PSG's head to sign the deal that he got. Yeah. Um, and you look at someone uh, of the character of Luca and and the grounding that he had through his life as a young man. If if anyone's ever read his book, and I've had the oh. I've read his book, and it's yep. and it, like at times it brings you to tears when you read his book because he, they need to make a movie about him. They really, yeah. really do need to make a movie about him. I reckon you'd, you'd have to actually make a couple of sequels, to be honest. But uh, let's talk money. Let's talk in the Croatian league. Um, let's talk money because some of the Croatian clubs. We talked last week how um, the clubs are going to get money from TV rights. The first time um, that it's ever happened, I guess, in the history of the HNL that the Croatian clubs, the um, elite division clubs, are going to get money. Now, Osijek, uh, Monza, for the first time in their, what, 110-year history, they yeah. have been promoted to Serie A in Italy. 
Um, yep. Bank crawled by Silvio Bedlushani and a few other AC Milan um, dignitaries. And headed up um, by Galliani, who was at AC Milan as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totti yep. Sveneka Veza too. Yeah, well, the good news for Osiek is because they've been promoted um, to the Serie A as a bonus for, um, for Mirko Maric, who they signed in 2020, Osiek is going to get 1.5 million euros just like that. Um, that's great, great news. Now, Hajduk yeah. split. There's talk that um, Stipe Buk, one of the most exciting young talents in Croatia, who just doesn't seem to be getting too much of a go. And when you've got Nikola Kalinic, uh, Marko Livaja, Jan Mlakar, it's very, very hard to get a lot of uh, minutes there. But there's talk that he could be going. Um, he could be going... Um, Abroad, and there's talk that there's, I think it's um, something like 7 million euro, 8 million euro is being wow. um, uh, bandied around. Uh, Mislav Orsic at Dinamo Zaga, there's talk that he's going to be going, possibly going um, even to England or to, to the Premiership there. But the big news about Dinamo Zagreb, and um, look, I'll take my hats off as a Haidukovac, I'll take my hats off to Dinamo Zagreb for the way they. Um, operate their club the business side of things and uh, get this this they stand to get something like 14 million euros without selling a single player 14 million euros without selling a single player and how is that possible basically they're going to be getting all these sign-on bonuses and sign-on fees for Danny Olmo Joško Vardiol um, there's talk that um, I think it's Josip uh, Brekalo might be moving as well uh, Lovro Mayer as well. Look, um, simply because uh, is it Leipzig, uh, Red Bull Leipzig, because they've qualified for the European Champions League and they won yeah. the, the they a million dollar million euro is going to go to Dinamo. The fact yeah. that they won the uh, German Cup as well, million euro goes to uh, uh, Dinamo. Um, Guardiol at the moment is being touted as anywhere between fifty and sixty million euro. The yeah. club is going to get something like 10 or 15%. I, stand, I may stand corrected, Dino Mozzi, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, about 10 or 15% of any ongoing transfer. So without selling a single player, Dinamo are set to get something like 14 million euros coming their way, which is... And it's timely, as our, as our next guest has already thrown you and I a comment on the side there, it's timely because we know that the stadium is um, oh, oh. something that they want to work on. So that money comes yeah. in really handy for the build of a new stadium. Yeah, absolutely. Right direction. Yeah, and hopefully it will be used for for the right reasons. Now, um, the the Osiak, Haiduk, and Dinamo aren't the only ones that are going to be getting money. Um, um, uh, Rijeka's captain um, Hrvoj Smolčić, uh, who was sent off in the cup match uh, just recently, he is reported to be signing for Eintracht Frankfurt for something like two point five million euros as well. So the, 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 that is just going to be um, another um, uh, huge money day for the um, Croatian uh, f- um, clubs. And if they do well in Europe uh, next season, yep, the money is just going to go chick ching chick ching yeah. chick ching well, they're uh, going to gonna be in Europe anyway, Eintracht, because they won the Europa. So, um, yeah, not a, not a bad club to go to if you want to get yourself some, uh, you know, build up your reputation and your resume. Now, we're going to jump over the border very, very shortly, very quickly. Speaking of Europe, Zirinsky Mostar, record-breaking season in the Big um, Liga. Um, they are just setting records left, right and centre. They finished on top um, 84 points to 57 tools La City. Um, yeah. But the most, I, I guess, apart from Zirinsky Mostar taking out the Big Championship, the other important thing is Posushe avoided relegation and, and in the end yep. ended up quite, quite, safe. Uh, Shiroki yeah. Brieg as well are there as well, which is great yeah. news. And there is talk that there could be another Croatian team on the way up from the um, second division in Bihar, which would be absolutely fantastic. But um, one of the players, Slobodan Jakovljevic, I don't know about that Christian name, but uh, <laughs> with the surname, definitely Croatian. He, yeah. um, in the last game against Rudar Priedor, um, which uh, uh, Zrinski won two 0 Now he 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 um, achieved his one hundred eighty fifth official game in um, in the colours of Zrinski, which is unreal, which is absolutely fantastic. He's in the top five now of the um, um, players who have donned the famous white strip with the uh, red sash. Um, so he's certainly a, a player who they call him the, the General Obrane, 
Um, just uh-huh. a reliable defender who is just, just you know, absolutely um, reliable. Um, and he's he's going to be there for a few more years for sure. Yeah. Now, let's hop back across the border to, um, to Split. Look, um, Last week, the cup final, hey, Dukwan, I'm sure everyone has seen all the um, all the um, photos, the footage, incredible. So, now, one of the really heartwarming stories to come out of all of this, you may remember, there was a young fella in Zagreb called Niko, a nine-year-old, and he had his um, Levaya top taken off him by a, uh, a bad blue boy in the street. Oh, he was just yeah. walking along. Um, yeah, told him take that take that top off. He took his top off, and the poor kid, you know, was topless. Had to walk home crying. Was was now his dad is is, is an ex Rijeka footballer. He's he's an A licensed coach, and he's a big Dinamo. It's being from Stolac in Herzegovina. Um, yeah. So you can imagine, you know, that the family sort of split. The dad's a big Dinamo. What's the kids a big Haiduka? Because he absolutely loves Marco Livaya and. Yeah. This this story is really heartwarming, and we've seen all the um, crap that's gone on with all the uh, rivalry between the Bad Blue Boys and Torcida, the North and the South, Zagreb split. This is one of those things that could really bring the country together in a, in a strange sort of a way. Little nine-year-old Nico, he he ended up getting the Hayduk, the top, his Hayduk top, because the Bad Blue Boy must have had a, a, a guilt trip or whatever, ended up going to the local cop shop, Returned the top, but then Livaya said that he was going to offer his top, his very top that he wore against Dinamo, and the club invited the um, the whole family down to the cup final. Now, um, Kartic, or I, um, who is a Hayduk player, obviously, he is also from Stolac, and he was able to. This is a great story, by the way. Yeah. He was able to uh, get uh, little Nico down to the back rooms to meet his idol, um, Marco yeah, Livaya. Yeah. And uh, the dad, in an interview with Slobodna Dalmatia, says, "Moi Niko sada ispava u dresu Livaja. Moi Niko now sleeps in the uh, in Livaja's top. He goes, they have to bribe him to get, you know, so that they can wash the top. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> absolutely fantastic story. And, uh, look, it's one of those, uh, you know, heartwarming things that you really, really just think, um, uh, how fantastic. There's Hayduk celebrating yeah. In their dressing rooms, and as you can expect, in the Hayduk dressing rooms, everything's white. It looks like a hospital. Everything looks so sterile and clinical. Clin- it's clinical. Is that for the players enjoying themselves hard, hard, uh, really, really heartily? So good on them. Yeah. Now speaking of Hayduk, um, this is a this is another good news story. Um, Zhenski Nogometni Club split. Um, they are the champions of the Croatian league this year, but Hayduk splits women's side have qualified. For the first division of the Croatian Women's League, Dinamo oh, uh, Maximir, yes, Dinamo Maximir are already in there, and so now Hayduk will play Dinamo in the women's as well as the men's next season. Yeah. But also the big derby will be when Hayduk comes comes up against Split because Split are the heavyweights. They and Osijek yeah. have been the heavyweights oh, of been... the women's scene. Yeah. And um, as, it's as great we know, to see. Uh, Laura Speranovic went to play at Split for a, for a year, and she she shared that news a couple of years ago about the rivalry between Split and Osijek. So uh, they're, because they're the only ones really that stand out, but now a bit of a challenge. Well, that's that's a great story, isn't it? We'll have to get Laura, I think, on um, one of these days uh, onto the uh, onto our show. But uh, let's get them all. The, let's um, get all the Speranovics on. Absolutely. It could be a family affair, yeah. Um, and there it was. Now, how it works is it's a 14-team 14 te- 14 season. Everyone plays each other twice in the, in, the, in the bottom ladder. Everyone plays each other twice. And then the top four split up for the championship group, group the bottom four in the um, relegation group. And uh, as you can see, split um, won it just by three points from Osijek who are a further two points ahead of Dinamo and Rijeka um, have their big... Um, so it's basically like the big four, but slightly yeah. differently, yeah. So uh, yeah. great to see there. And last but not least, we've got um, Torcida Split, who uh, uh, is, an, is a futsal club um, formed by supporters, and they've been slowly working their way up, and they now will be in the elite competition, the elite division of um, of the Croatian futsal league. Now you guess you guessed it. Guess who else is in the um, elite competition? Futsal uh, Dinamo. Yes, <laughs> Futsal Dinamo. Now Futsal Dinamo was formed 
uh, by the fans as a, initially as a revolt against Dinamo Zagreb when the fans were bluing and boycotting um, Dinamo March, Zagreb games. Yeah. Yes. And they decided that they were going to boycott the Dinamo games and came along to watch the futsal Dinamo boys. And there were sometimes crowds of 2,000 at these futsal games involving futsal Dinamo. Well, next year, I guess there's going to be some massive, massive crowds <laughs> in the futsal league, which is absolutely fantastic as long as it doesn't get out of hand. But yeah. um, I'm all for it. And I think that is going to make next year's football um, scene in Croatia even more exciting, whether it be the high nil, put of a high nil, whether it be the women's competition or whether it be futsal, um, yeah. I think we're going to be in for an absolutely exciting 2022 slash 23 year sip. I look forward to it already, mate. Now, we are going to play, um, I think we're going to play that, um, if we can get that opportunity to get that, um, the, the, uh, the, what's it called? I was talking about the, um, the uh, official trailer of the, um, the FIFA Plus. Just, the FIFA Plus. We're just trying to get that up now. Um, it is an exo- – I haven't had a chance to watch it. It is an hour and a half. No, not yet. I've got to put it for tomorrow, mate. Yeah, but it is really, really um, – with well, the first little bit, bits that I've seen are absolutely awesome. We're going to watch this trailer, folks. When we return then, it's time for our guest tonight, Ivica Petrlic from the Gorslich Bears. So don't go away, folks. Take um, take this uh, trailer on board, and then we'll uh, be back straight after this. Ako možemo govoriti o kreaciji nacionalnog identiteta kroz sport, Hrvatska je vjerojatno jedna od država koja bi trebala biti na prvom mjestu u svijetu. That Croatia side from 98. They're a brilliant team. We had that extra thing. We knew that we can beat anyone. That team gave us belief that we can achieve something great in Russia. That was a team that had been through the war. And I think there's just this great sense of purpose. It was a strange feeling to play football with so many bad things going around. Enough is enough. We're going out of Yugoslavia. If we all need to die, we'll do it. I've been in and around 18 wars. This is the most brutal of them all. I think everybody knew it was just a matter of time before things fell apart. And you see that through football. Welcome back to the Oz Crow Soccer Show, and it's an absolute pr- pleasure to bring onto the screen now um, our very, very special guest tonight, Ivica Petrlic from the Gorse Beach Bears. Ivica, how are you? Good morning. Uh, sorry, good morning. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> crazy. Uh, yeah, how am I? I'm a bit in shock, to be honest. Um, but just every day, just being strong for, for the players and for the club. Um, it's been a very turbulent time. Um, we did actually play on Sunday because... I didn't actually know of the passing of our coach. That was yeah. a very um, interesting day. And then I got the news at five o'clock in the evening, which till this day I still can't believe. But um, what's happened going forward is we've had an overwhelming response from our Croatian community and our Croatian clubs local and, and, and abroad, sorry, in, in the state, um, giving us great messages and support. Um, it's been fantastic response. And from the club course, which you want to thank every one of those uh, you know, service members and the Croatian community uh, from locals to interstate. So we're very, we're very humbled for that support we get. We are getting. As we yeah. can see on the screen, um, he, he leaves behind a very young family: Maya, his um, his wife, Zara, his beautiful little girl, and and there's a little boy on the way as well. Um, due end of the year, it's 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 a tragic time. It really is. I know. I got the news about not even an hour before we were meant to come on air um, for the Football Out West show. And, and as we said at the start of the show, Maxi was such a passionate fan of the Football Out West show. 
of our program, the Oz Crow Soccer Show. And and he even even tuned into the third show of our of our family, the Geelong Region Soccer Show. Even though he wasn't from Geelong, he took an active interest in what was happening with all soccer at at, at all levels. He was a passionate Liverpool supporter, passion passionate Hayduk split supporter. Um, you know, um, he, he was just an incredible person. And he, if it's uh, so many people say we didn't even know him, we never met him, but we felt like we knew him. Now you who knew him really well. Give us a little bit of an insight as to what the real Maxi Mio Sentic was like. Well, that's an interesting story just on that point. Um, I didn't even know his name was Mio <laughs> until just yeah, recently. Not, not. <laughs> so yeah. so yeah. when uh, we actually had a discussion over a few drinks about that, and I still couldn't believe him. But uh, me and Maxi go back uh, 2003 playing Rezies for Dynamo. Um, I was a right winger. He was a right winger. At the time, he didn't really like me much because I got more game time than him. But he did, you know, it's good to have that conversation. But uh, I, as I said, you know, I didn't know Maxi from that time on. Um, and then come two years ago during COVID, we had a season launch at uh, Dynamo and I was going to get some drinks for the boys and I saw Maxi buying a packet of chips and I said, what are you doing, Maxi? We've got a couple of boys upstairs, come upstairs, we're at a season launch, you know, we're having a few drinks, you know, what are you, what are you doing? And he goes, oh, look, if it's, I'm not, I'm not a bear. And I said, well, not yet, you know, so... And that's that's how the start of the the tenure of Maxi Santich at the Gore Speech. I planted the seed, and and he became my assistant coach for the season two thousand and twenty. No, sorry, two thousand and twenty one. Um, and he helped me a lot, and I'm very um, grateful for what Maxi's done for the team, for the club, especially in in our you know in our tough times. Um, for me personally, I speak to I speak to Maxi on a weekly basis. We spoke about many aspects of many things, more so football. Um, how's the team going? You know, where are they going? The direction we're going in. Um, and we spoke a lot about the future and what it looks like. And that's that's why it's very hard for me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, look, it would be tough, mate. And I, I could endorse what you're saying there. If it's um, from my own perspective, uh, I've had a fortune of knowing Maxi over a few years now. But I'll give you one little bit of insight here, gentlemen. Is um, My daughter was invited by Maxi and Robbie Rubinic uh, in 2018 to join the Dynamo uh, women's team at the Croatian soccer tournament in Goldie. And um, after a few training sessions, you know, that they were happy to include her and they thought that she'd fit in well and went went to extreme lengths to make sure that she felt like a dynamo girl, that she like like she wasn't anywhere else. And um kitted her out, you know, and just made sure that she was looked after. Even after the tournament and when Jasmine decided that she she couldn't stay at St. Albans so she she had a year twelve studies to do and all that sort of stuff. Maxie would call her every week and say, yeah. How was your game? How was your game? And that that went on to this day, like to the last weekend, you know. It speaks it, it speaks was, volumes of Maxi's that's, uh, that's big the guy heart. he is, mate. You know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my my own recollection of him when I first met him, speaking of St Albans Dynamo, he came into the FNR studios when we were doing the first season of um, football out west, and um, he he. He came into the um, studio and he almost like was in awe of us for promoting the sport, for, for promoting the club. But, I mean, we've seen this last week. He's had such a touching effect on so many people and not just the Croatian clubs. I've, I've seen on Football Out West. I've seen on the Geelong Region Soccer Show. I've seen on the Ozcrow Soccer Show. I've seen on St. Albans Dinamo sites. Everywhere, all the social medias. People from other clubs are just, you know, Hvalospiev um, is the Croatian word. They're, they're, yeah. uh, they're giving out praise to this man. I am personally in awe at how much this guy has touched the hearts of the football community around. around. And, and look, our own story, Josipe, you know, yeah. take our hats off to, to, uh, to, to, to Maxi. Maxi was responsible, I, 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 and if it's so, you can probably back me on this, he was responsible for getting the Gorsbich Bears to be our first club to be the sponsor of this show. And that got the catalyst rolling for all the other clubs, all the sponsors. It, it, he was the one that, that Pokrenwoye initiative, as they say in yeah. Croatian. I'm so, I don't know, so emotional at the moment. I can't even speak English properly. Uh, <laughs> all Croatian. <laughs> all Croatian, <laughs> yeah. And that was one of the things, uh, Maxi Bogbu Pokoj, um, he was from Metković, we were from Metković. We shared so much in common. 
he was he loved his Croatian soccer. We shared so much in common. We loved Hajduk and Liverpool and all that. But the one thing that we shared so much in common was our love for the community. And that is the one thing that seems to just resonate with everyone. Yeah. Um, he was just an incredible, incredible man. Uh, yeah, yeah. If it's there, um, yeah. with I, I know that the, there's a lot of people hurting at the uh, Gorspich and the St Albans uh, surrounds as well. I know that the club's going through some uh, efforts to try and um, help the family out. Did you want to explain a little bit about that? Yeah, so just based on this photo you guys are presenting right now, um, I'm very grateful for Dynamo for opening up the club on a Monday. Um, we just thought it was a good idea for get all the playing group to you know come down and have a chat and have a drink. Uh, in uh, Max's honour, um, mm. and it was really good. It was really good. You know, we had a nice uh, prayer from Mario Djurjevic. He spoke very highly of Ma uh, Maxi, and his his prayer, you know, it really touched the heart. Um, and it was really good to have uh, the, the Gorsuch Bears faithful there, the players there, to show Maxi that, you know, we cared and, he, you know, we were really um, were very fortunate to have him in our presence at the club. So, sorry, um, Yossi, what was your question? Uh, the club's organising some some extra support for the family as well? Yes, yeah, so um, I'm just going to make a quick mention. This is a big shout-out to... Um, sorry, what was his name? Tomislav. Tomislav, Tomislav Kral. Yeah, so Tomislav yeah. Kral is a great friend of Maxi's um, and he's uh, started a GoFundMe page, uh, which is fantastic, a great effort. And I just want to make mention to all the community out there and anyone who's donated. Um, last time I checked, it's at $30,000. Um, wow. The aim is... Oh, yeah, the, the aim is to get and, fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah, and that was that that snap that you see there. That was taken during the middle of the day, towards the end of the day, actually. So it's probably in the last couple of hours that that's almost doubled. So um, that's that's incredible. Yeah, that was probably earlier today, around about three p.m. or something like that. So look yeah. at that. That's 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 incredible. It just Post goes off what you it just goes what you what you mentioned, Tonchi. You know, he touched a lot of people's hearts here and in a far and. Uh, and at Gorsuch ourselves, we've you know we've put into place uh, whatever the, the playing group uh, donates, the club will match as, as well. So that oh, money will be coming be coming into the into the donation. But it's been a, it's been a great response. You know, I've just looked at all the names, and it's been a great response from so many people out there that um, yeah. from from myself and from the Gorsuch community. We we are very grateful and thankful of of that. Yeah, thanks, nice Craig Filer. Craig Filer's just updated us. That's thirty three thousand at the moment. So there thanks, go. Craig. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, look, it's, that's that's um, after a day. That's after a that's day, after guys. A day. That's pretty, that's so, pretty amazing. Once even so, we, we've no doubt all had uh, family members in recent times that we've had to say goodbye to. We know mm. it's a, it's a really uncomfortable place to be, and you have to start talking about. Um, you know, selections of things, and when you start seeing those price tags mount up, it it, it can really it can really smack between the eyes mm. how com how confronting that is. And mm -hmm. I guess from a community perspective, from someone like Maxi, who's done so much uh, in terms of his input for other people's other people to have a great output, uh, it's the least that we can do as a community is to come together. Um, and whatever it might be, whether it's a dollar or two, or whether it's a hundred or two hundred, or whether it's a thousand or two thousand or more, please, Croatian community, come together here in Australia. I know there's businessmen out there that can probably help a little bit more. This is a young family with a baby on the way who will never meet their father. Um, it's important that we do the right thing and stand shoulder to shoulder here and make sure that those little kids and Maya have a have a um, a, a a sensible way of life and they can support each other through these toughest of times. Yeah, absolutely. That's well said. Well said, Josip. Well said. Yeah. Um, getting back to that, 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 um, that thing there, there's the, um, website guys, www. The, um, so the, um, this is the GoFundMe page, um, go www.gofundme.com forward slash F forward slash, um, may hyphen maxis hyphen spirit, hyphen live hyphen on may maxi spirit live on um just, please just make, it, just make it easier just jump on the bears website it's right there guys oh yeah. there you go there you we'll go. have it on ours too Taunch. we'll, we'll get yeah, it absolutely. out to as many people as possible and but you know if we if we have to lean on a few people Taunch, we'll lean on a few people mate yeah absolutely it, it is just you know please if you can do donate um you know um it, it, it is a uh, you know, as we said, we'll, we'll pop that photo up of, of his young family. It's tragic. It is tragic when you see something like that. It really is heartbreaking. Um, 
you know, don't don't ask us what was the cause of it. We just know it was a heart attack. We just don't know anything else. And whatever it is, it is it is truly, truly tragic. But, uh, um, you know, um, may he rest in peace. But he's, I know it's still too early, but, you know, he was, Maxie was always talking about, you know, the future and down the track and planning. And, and it was, Gorse Beach Bears are a very, very ambitious club. Um, have the guys had any chance to sort of think where to next, what to what what next? You know, um, I know it's it's hard to talk about a succession plan at the moment, but you know, is the game going to go ahead this Sunday? Is 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 there going to be an interim coach? What now, Ivica? Uh Yeah, the game will um, go ahead this Sunday. Uh, out of respect for um, Maxi, but the following Sunday we might have to postpone uh, due, in due course to the funeral. We don't know when the funeral is going to be. Uh, so a succession plan is we've got an assistant coach, uh, Josip Radosevic, who will um, take reign and then I'll help him uh, support him as much as he possibly can. And that's a good thing about Gorsuch. It's always been that way. You know, we've always been a small club. We've always been that community club for, the, yeah. you know, the Croatian community. And we've always been that family club that everyone respects. You know, we, we don't, I don't think I've ever heard a bad, bad thing about Gorsuch. And that's why I do what I do for the club, because I just feel like there's so much potential for our small club. Yeah. Um, going forward, um, you know, I see, I hear it all the time. There's so many young Croatians that are playing at top Croatian clubs that are not getting a run. So then I yeah. ask the question, where are they going? You know what I mean? So we, we've definitely yeah. got plans, but how do I, you know, how do I go about those plans? It's not, it's not as easy as one says. So yeah, yeah so we, with with Maxi, you know, as I said, I spoke to him on a weekly basis, and we spoke about many things, spoke about many things, and um, yeah, he he had big plans, you know, and I agreed with his plans. He wanted to get to state five. Um, and when I heard those words from him, you know, it's just, you know, makes your heart grow fonder because that's, you know, that's, yeah. that's what any club wants. You don't want to play in a lot of things. You want to, you want to test yourself. You want to see what you're capable of doing and capable of achieving, you know, well, across the yeah, line. Yeah. And I know we would have got support from, you know, our fantastic club, Dynamo. They've been with us. They've, been, they've, they've supported us for the past six, seven years. You know, we'll, we're on the, uh, on the verge of, um, folding because of outside influences. Dinamo came to our saviour, and we will never that will never be forgotten. We're very grateful for Dinamo and what Dinamo does for us year, year on, year on out. That's what a community does, mate. Absolutely. Dario, Dario Medjugorac in the comment section says, RIP Maxi. Gents, thank you for paying great tribute and awesome respect on this show and on Football Last West. It's appreciated. Uh, Dario, it's appreciated from us. Uh, trust us. Trust oh, yeah. because Maxi's done so much for the Football Out West show and, indeed, the um, Ozcrow Soccer show. It's absolutely, you know, the, the, the absolute least we can do. Um, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, Tunch. Look, you know, during the day, uh, as you know, you and I always on, on show day, we're always in touch with each other four or five yeah. times before. And I was driving home from my son's training and I was just like, it, how's this going to be the same? I, I'd look to the right of my panel and the first name I saw every week. Every week. Like, yeah. And, and let me just bring up uh, a couple of those comments. Um, there we go. Look, look at the look at this. This is from last week, and this is gonna. Uh, I'm gonna struggle to to keep it together. Um, these were comments Maxi Sp- Santich made last week. Um, you know, he, he just bombarded us with comments, positive comments. Asked Spider what was it like to arrive at AC Milan for the first time, and which teammates he keeps in contact with today. Many of those that have gone abroad to develop have come back. He was there to give his opinion. He was there to give his encouragement. He was always there to give everything. Great work, gents. Love the results wrap you guys do every week. Great insights. Amazing. Thanks, gents. This killed me. This absolutely killed me. Good stuff, gents. See you next week. Yeah. Let's just leave it at that, huh? Yeah. R.I.P. Maxi Santich. Gone, but never, ever, ever forgotten. Ivica, thank you so much. And please keep us posted with um, any details of the funeral. Um, yep. When that, that happens, um, I know it's probably still too early for that. Is there any, any way of knowing knowing when it is going to be approximately roughly? Um, yeah, so I just got some information from his uh, brother, Ante. He's going to... Uh, uh, Give me uh, posted, keep me posted with the funeral dates. But he did request, which you know, um, he did request from the club that all the players wear their colours at the funeral. Yeah. So it was so. 
Speaking of which, folks, um, um, we're told by Craig Filer, I was told by Craig Filer, my, uh, my co-host on Football Out With Show, and, and Steve Curtin as well. They are going to be doing um, how appropriate um, and how relevant it is that they will be commentating Sunday's game. Um, so St. Albans Dynamo will be um, playing this Sunday at home. There will be a some, some form of a uh, probably a minute silence or something like that as well. Um, in honor uh, as tribute to Maxi. But there's the GoFundMe page. You can have a look at the address there, or you can go to the uh, Gorspitch Bears um, Facebook page. We'll pop it on our on, on our page as well. Um, let Maxi's spirit live on. Folks, he was a great man, and I know how Maxi would have been. He would have wanted us to celebrate football, celebrate him. Um, and um, all I'm going to say is uh, that this epitomizes a you know, a true Croatian. He was a passionate Heidulkovac, but he was also happy to don the famous Dinamo shirt as well. That's what it's all about. That's what That's it's right. all about. And may his memory live on. Like I'm here, it's a, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. I know it wasn't easy, but... Um, no, thank it, you, boys. Said, appreciate it. Yeah, as you said, it was... Um, Maxi wanted... If it was up to Maxi, he would wanted the show to go on, I'm sure... If there's good internet connection up there in heaven, he's uh, he's uh, tuning into this uh, he's got program. Super fast, mate. He's got the super fast. And and Evomi Nesto Imatu. There's something there. Um, people, maybe you don't know anything about this, but I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. Maxi Sentich was the king of our comments. He was the king of our comments <laughs> for some unknown reason, unexplained reason. Our our chat lines, our comments is not working tonight. You're joking. Yeah. I no, am not joking. We, we I can see it here. No, we can't it's not, see it. We can't see it. On our on our on our instrument panel, yeah, right. we can't see it. And I am I'm, I'm having to get a, a an iPad and then just keep on scrolling. That's why my mind's sort of been on other things today. That is dead set. Gives we have me to go to Facebook to see it. We can't on see it on yeah, our yeah. panel. Yeah. Nest on your, yeah uh, it's good to see know. some touching comments from uh, you know the Gorse Pitch Elite and, and yeah. people from the community. It's fantastic. Yeah. Even Anthony Jimmy, Anthony. Jimmy, 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 yeah, Jimmy Kip, calls from, from Gippsland. Yeah, no, the touching not. tribute man, R.I.P. Maxi Anthony Zorvax is one of the true gentlemen within in our community, passionate about all of our clubs and community. Absolutely, absolutely, so true. Couldn't have said it better myself. Even so, thank you so much for for joining Thanks, us. Boys. We really appreciate it. Uh, luck and guys. Thanks very much. Luck and noche. We'll be back very shortly. Are you one of those people that just pays their business insurance each year? Insurance is the last thing we want to worry about when running our business day to day, unless there is a claim that needs to be made, right? And once we have our insurance in place, we just keep renewing it. We just find it too hard to shop around. Does that sound like you? Well, at your business insurance, we could save you money and get you a better deal. We'll review your current insurance and determine if you're getting the most favourable offers from the insurance market. Call Your Business Insurance on 1300 767 456. Welcome back to the Ozcro Soccer Show. It has been probably one of our biggest, one of our most emotional and indeed a celebratory um, show as well because it has really encapsulated everything there is to cover about Croatian football. And I hope those of you who aren't regular viewers of our show that you will tune in on a regular basis. Thank you for joining us tonight. Josip, has, it hasn't been an easy show, but it has been in many, many ways a yeah, rewarding show. It has. And um, I can't help but think to how much Maxi would have enjoyed the chat with Nicholas Bilukopic earlier. Mm. Kind of just kept looking down at the Facebook feed, something something was amiss, mate. Yeah. You just, I just yeah. didn't have that in, that in, intriguing question coming from somewhere. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Folks, thank you once again, sincerely from the bottom of our hearts, for being a part of tonight's show. We hope you really enjoyed it. We're going to see you next week. Now, next week, we're moving back to our traditional Wednesday night time slot. Is that right, Josipe? Uh, yes, we're back to Wednesday night, uh, and uh, make sure you tune in at 8.30 uh, Eastern Standard Time. And I have a quick update. Um, Nicholas's dad, uh, Jerry, is coaching Mounties Warriors and Wanderers. Uh, still nil-nil. They're going to extra time Ooh. against the Serbs. So 
Come on, Jerry. Get that team <laughs> over did, the Jerry. line. Hi there, Jerry. Hi there. You there. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much once again, folks, for joining us. And please share this um, with our YouTube link either the tonight's link, share it around so that people, as many people as possible can see um, this tribute, this special tribute. We will have a very, very special edited version of this tribute to to um, to Maxi Santich around, yeah. as well, as well as the interview with Nicholas Bilokapic. But please share it far and wide. We want as many people to know what the legacy of um, me or Max Santich was. On that note, folks, Lakunoch, good night, and thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you.